Welcome everyone, Happy New Year, and this is the first part in the Vintage Motherboard Hall series in which we're going to test all of the previously untested motherboards. In this first part, the MSI K70 Turbo version 3. We have an MSI K70 Turbo version 3. This is the first motherboard in our motherboard hall. And we'll be testing it in this video to see whether or not it works and to have an all overall overview of the motherboard and uh, yeah, we're gonna have some fun with this for sure. It is a K7 based motherboard, which means this is the AMD K7 platform. It is socket 462, otherwise known as socket A. This is a first revision socket A motherboard. What I mean by that is that this is in the uh, early days of socket A, just after they moved from slot A to socket A. This has the VIA uh, KT133, I believe. Uh, at least it's a VIA133 chipset, which means we have 133 MHz frontside bus, which does clock doubling on AMD to 266. And as you can see, we have a cooler on there. We have three memory slots. These are SD RAM up to 133 MHz, two IDE channels, and a floppy channel. A more uh, luxury version of this would have had an IDE RAID controller connected over here. Pl or uh, a CMOS battery is intact. We have an onboard PC speaker. All the caps appear to be somewhat decent-ish. I'm suspecting a recap around the CPU socket. These two are looking slightly suspicious. This one feels completely flat, so it's probably fine. I don't see any uh, signs of electrical light leaking. This one is a little bit suspicious, but still feels flat to the top. Maybe it's something else, and uh, well, we'll see what happens if uh, it were to die. We don't even know if this board works. The entire uh, hole that I got was a decent price, but it was all, of course, untested. So we don't know any history whatsoever. In terms of expansion slots, we have an AGP slot. This is the universal flavor. We have a, a, a vast number of PCI slots. We have one, two, three, four, five, six of them and a uh, AMR or CMR slot, depending on which brand you're actually uh, using. And uh, yeah, overall it appears in decent condition. It is very, very heavy. So a decent quality board from uh, back in those days. Nice board down there, that's a whole different story. That board will definitely not be tested. More about that in another video, another part of this video. We'll see how this goes, <laughs> bear with me. In terms of rear I.O., we have the standard PC98 layout, which means we have PS2 here, USB here, we have onboard serial, parallel game port, and audio there. There is no onboard networking on this motherboard, so you'll have to use a uh, network interface card on PCI or using this uh, riser slot there. So, without further ado, let's actually proceed and connect a power supply and see if there are any signs of life. Uh, I've got an assortment of memory here. We have two sticks of 64 megahertz, or uh, megahertz, megabytes at 100 megahertz, uh, PC100 memory. And we have one stick here of 256 meg, um, I believe, that's 128, uh, of PC133. I know this motherboard will take 133, but I also know that there are a couple of other boards that will likely not take it because they are limited in some way. So we'll just put the memory in, like so, and we're shaking a little bit, there we go, that board flex is something else, video card, most basic thing I could find, and video Riva TNT2 model 64, the de facto slow card, perfect for testing purposes. In fact, we have a main board that has the same chip on it as on this GPU. So that'll be fun. We might actually put them head to head. Uh, yeah, I do actually have another slot one board that has AGP, so we can actually uh, fit them together. That'll be fun. Uh, so, yeah, let's uh, hook up a power supply and test it out. All right, we're ready for our power up. So, let's see what happens. We have a sign of life, which is the fan that's powering on. A 
now we'll have to see if it's going to post or not. I'm going to say no. All right, we've cleared CMOS. Let's see if that does anything. I'm going to guess not. Unfortunately, I do not have a post analyzer card, so there's no way for sure to tell uh, what's wrong here. It's just uh, below one away. All right. That's all right. I also don't know if this power supply is actually sufficient to power this board on. Because it is a modern variety motherboard or a power supply. And they might not be such a good combination. Okay. Now we've changed RAM. Ah, it was RAM. Cool. Very cool. Yep. That's what we're looking for. Ethlon 1200 megahertz. If that's accurate, I'm not actually too fussed to take the heat sink off because of all that brittle plastic down there. Uh, this is so good to see. Ah, it's the year 2000. On January 1st, 2000, I was almost six years old, two weeks off from being six years old, which is decent. Uh, I'm not sure if this motherboard actually has automatic detection for the CPU. I would imagine it does, being that this board is, I believe, from either 1999 or the year 2000. It all says auto detect. Okay, sure. Huh, that's interesting. You can set the CPU clock ratio. It'll be set to 12x, I suppose. Oh, well, it's running at 10, 133, so this should be 8x, 9x? I think 9x, or 8.5, something like that. But alright. Or it seems functional at least with uh, the the 100 and or the 100 megahertz memory. Yeah, responds rather well. It's good. Okay. Um. I think that's all we can do for now. So. I'll get an operating system set up and then we can do some testing. Alright, we have an operating system on the K7T motherboard here. It's running nice and quiet, so uh, everything is working fine. Don't have a proper sound driver, but everything else is working. Even installed a network card so we can get on the network. Not that it matters. But, um, yeah, I swapped out the CMOS battery. It was behaving a bit weirdly. I had to uh, reset the CMOS every other boot, otherwise it wouldn't post again. That seems to be uh, working now. Here we have an old version of CPU Z. Although that version is not actually detecting the CPU. Here is a special Windows Nut X version, so we can see what kind of CPU we have. And we should see an Athlon 1200, and it is, it is an Athlon Thunderbird 1200 megahertz. Very nice. I've never owned a, an Athlon Thunderbird, so that's good. We have 256k of cash on the level 2. Our BIOS from 2001, here is a slightly newer one. This supports HP 4X, KT133A, 128 megabytes of RAM. Actually, this might be the issue of the instability. It's running at 133 megahertz at CL2. That's pretty tight timings. Because it's actually, as you can see here, uh, 100 megahertz memory. 
So that's really interesting. I, I didn't actually consider that. So yeah, so there's our instability right there. Otherwise the system is working perfectly fine for hot boots and all that. And our TNT2 is made by a pellet. I actually did not know that. Okay, so here we have a built-in benchmark so we can get some numbers going. These are all uh, Pentium 1s and 486s. This is actually a special retro version. We can't really bench against these. These are all a bit slower. I'll use these in the, with these slot 1 boards. Let's just bench it against the Via Eden, I guess. See what happens. I think that's actually a dual-core CPU, but I'm not entirely sure. I'm not really into uh, Via and uh, Cyrix stuff. All right. I guess that's based on older technology then, because this Athlon Thunderbird is absolutely smoking it. That's very nice to see. Yeah, let's not validate that. But that's working great. Alright, so for most of the other boards we'll probably go back to DOS, and the newer boards will be Windows XP, uh, where you can do, get some other numbers. I have a CD installed, which I'm not sure we can actually access. It would appear not. I guess the next step would be to just install MS-DOS on this SD card, or Compact Flash rather. We're using a 4GB uh, Compact Flash card I found uh, in a drawer with an IDE adapter attached to it, which is very nice. But yeah, as you can see, the system is operating nicely. And yeah, we don't have an, uh, a CD-ROM driver for the DOS mode yet. We can, of course, fix that later. All right, so we'll run the DOS benchmarks from within Windows, I suppose. We'll go for the 3D bench. Again, Athlon Thunderbird, 1.2 gigahertz. It's more than 100 frames per second. So let's run the faster PC version, 1.0C. Again, this is intended to run on 486s, so there we go, 565 frames per second. Very powerful indeed. Let's go for Chris's 3D bench. That was quick. 579.5 frames per second. All right. So let's do the PC player at 64480. System is more than powerful enough to do that. Nice and glitchy. I guess that's what happens when you're not running it from DOS. Looks nice and smooth though. This thing is a beast for software rendering, I suppose. That's a bit on the fast side if you're actually looking for a DOS gaming PC, I guess, but you know, you could clock it down, slower multiplier and all that. We have 162.6 FPS. Alright, very nice to see. The other things that I want to check are the Quake time demo, and then the Doom time demo, and then that'll be it for this motherboard, and we'll go on to the next one, which will be its own video, because otherwise these videos are going to get very, very long, and uh, yeah, we'll just uh, have to go from there, I guess. It appears that Quake has frozen the system. Yeah, it most certainly did. Well, I guess no Quake for us. In that case, we'll do the Doom Time demo instead.
we actually have a disk bottleneck because it's running so fast the compact flashcard cannot keep up with it. Which is very fun to see. Compact flashcards are not fast. All right, we have 200 or 2,134 game ticks in 696 real ticks. I'll add the converted FPS on the screen, and that'll be our reference for the uh, other boards. And uh, yeah, so that is the test and first look at the K70 Turbo version three from MSI with an Athlon Thunderbird 1200. The board appears fully functional and uh, seems stable enough. I'm very happy with uh, this first result and hopefully we're going to get uh, a bit luckier with the other boards as well. So uh, especially looking forward to the slot 1 ones and the other boards uh, are just a bonus really. I mean uh, the real vintage stuff is what really gets my uh, ticker going so uh, yeah. Hope you enjoyed this video, and thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one. As a little bonus clip, in the end, Quick actually decided to play ball. So we'll run it once more. This is the default 320-200 benchmark, because it wouldn't load at 644.80. And here we go.